What about these particular messages caught your attention? There were three very critical uh, components of these messages. Can we start with the first one? Yes. And what was that? The first one is in line 1781. This is a text initiated by Chad Daybell to Lori Vallow. And you can see that Chad said he had the inspiration to go back to my original death percentages. So this is the first time that we see the full phrase of death percentage. And it is attributable to Chad Daybell by the use of the word my. And then he indicates that these death percentages helped him track Charles, which is a reference to Charles Vallow. Ned is the name of the demonic entity that was alleged to be possessing Charles Vallow. And then he indicates that Tammy is very close. Her death percentage has fallen steadily and concludes with it is encouraging exclamation point. Do you also see the reference in there to Hiplos or Iplos? Yes. Do you know who that's in reference to? That's the name of a demonic entity that was uh, supposed to have been uh, inside of Tammy Daybell. And you said Tammy. I'm on Hiplos. Yes. So it says Tammy is very close. Her percentage, meaning Tammy's percentage, has fallen steadily since Hiplos left. So that entity is now out of her. Do you recall if Hiplos was an entity that was indicated to be associated with Charles Vallow? Judge, I'm going to object. That's leading. Sustained. Do you know who else Hiplos may have been uh, associated with? There was another reference to that using that same demonic entity name with Charles Vallow. What was the second thing that stood out to you? The second thing that stood out uh, is this reference to Chad Daybell's death percentages that helped track Charles Vallow. Charles Vallow didn't have a heart attack or pass away in his sleep. Judge, I'm going to object. It's narrative. Overruled. He was shot and killed. And so these death percentages by Charles, by Chad Daybell are not simply a reference to natural deaths. And what was the third thing? Well, the third thing is in lines 1779 and 1778. Lori's response to Chad is to inquire what is the percentage now, meaning what is Tammy Daybell's death percentage, and then she follows that up with yet another inquiry. This would be now the third inquiry about JJ's death percentage. Chad Daybell responds, Tammy is at three, JJ is at two. And based on your review and your investigation, in relation to death percentages, what was the indication the lower the number got? Well, it's not consistent. So you have references where the lower the number, the closer to death they are, and then you have references where the higher the number, the closer they are. So in the previous communication, you saw... Chad Daybell indicate that JJ was at 99.99, and he instructed JJ to follow Amy into the light. In this occasion, we're at the, we flipped, and they're at the opposite end of the spectrum, uh, saying that Tammy is at three, and now JJ as, is at two versus the prior message. So there's, there's a lack of consistency, but the higher the number in one case, the lower the number in another.
And moving to the next slide, I'm going to pause to allow the jurors to read. And Agent Hart, can you indicate the date these messages were sent into the record? Yes, July 30th, 2019. These are a continuation from the previous slide. And what about these messages stood out to you? Well, first, Lori Vallow's response back to Chad Daybell after receiving his answer uh, that... Uh, I believe it was Tammy was at a three and JJ was at a two. She, she replies two and 3%, not zero. So we see Lori Vallow pushing uh, zero, meaning the time has come for those individuals to die. Judge objection calls for speculation. I'm going to move to strike, Judge. Well, the objections... Not timely. I'll overrule it at this point, but uh, Ms. Blake, I am concerned if the witness is making his own interpretations of these messages not based on the investigation. So if you could direct the examination that way, that'll help with the objections. And in coming to that conclusion, was that based on your experience and your review of the information? Yes. What else stood out about this particular message? Line 1776, where Chad Daybell says, I will explain when we talk, indicating he is the source of what's happening. Was that consistent with your review of these messages? Yes, we see that exact phrase multiple times, I will explain. Anything else about this particular series that stood out to you? Well... Lastly, again, we see how Lori Vallow is attempting to manipulate Chad Daybell. She concludes this conversation with, okay, still feeling hot for you. And moving to the next slide, I'm going to pause to allow the jurors to read. Agent Hart, can you indicate the date these were being sent into the record? These two text messages were also on July 30th of 2019. And who were these messages between? Chad Daybell and Lori Vallow. What about these particular messages caught your attention? Uh, two things. What was the first one? The first is a continuation uh, to further explain um, Chad Daybell's death percentages. In the second sentence, he references this chart that checks what percentage mortals are still in their body and then indicates that it worked for his friend's wife who died. And so we see just a further explanation of death percentages and that this is talking about physical, real death, not spiritual death or some other kind of death. Was that chart that was referenced, was a copy of it ever located? No, we could never find the actual chart. I 
I can't account for where it might be. And what was the second thing that stood out to you? Well, there are two more. The first is that he references Tammy Daybell, his wife, that she said she felt lightheaded as if her body and spirit weren't connected. And then what was the third thing? The third thing is in line 1773, where Chad Daybell indicates he would update the list and figure out Brandon, Adam, and others. The reference to Brandon is Brandon Boudreaux, and on October 2nd of 2019. Judge, I'm going to object at this point. This is definitely becoming a narrative. Sustained. Who was Brandon referencing? Brandon Boudreaux. Do you know um, of something that happened in relation to Brandon Boudreaux? Yes. What was that? On October 2nd, 2019, an attempt was made on his life. Are you aware of an attempt that was made on Tammy Daybell's life? Judge, I'm going to object. Calls for speculation. Overruled. I am. And when was that? October 9th, 2019. Moving to the next slide, I'm going to pause to allow the jurors to read. Agent Hart, can you indicate the date these images were sent? These were both sent on August 7th of 2019. Were you able to, looking at that first image there, who is that? That is Chad Daybell. Can you tell from the photo what type of building he may be in? Yes, it's uh, the lobby of an LDS, an old LDS church. And who sent that photo? So the photo of Chad Daybell was sent by Alex Cox to Lori Vallow with the caption, look at the bubbies. Do you know what bubbies was a reference to? That was a word. Uh, objections, calling for speculation, no foundation. I'll sustain that without additional foundation. Through your investigation and review of messages, were you able to determine what Bubby's was in reference to? Yes. And what was that? It's just simply a pet name that Lori had for Chad Daybell and Alex Cox or other men in her life. And could you see the time that that message was sent? 10.48 a.m. And turning to the next image, who are we seeing in that photo? That's a photograph of Alex Cox. Does that appear to be in the same location? Yes. And when? what time was that message sent? One minute prior on 1047 AM. Who sent that message? Chad Daybell. And who did he send it to? Lori Vallow. What was the caption that Chad included? Two exalted beings. Was Tammy Daybell still alive on August 7th of 2019? Yes. Moving to the next slide, I'm going to pause to allow the jurors to read.
Would you please indicate the date these messages were sent into the record? These messages were exchanged on August 7th of 2019. Who were the messages exchanged between? Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell. And these messages were sent on the same day as those two images? Correct. What about these messages stood out to you? The thing that stood out the most in this text series is in line 1391 in the text from Lori Vallow to Chad Daybell, where she indicates, we are both so tired of taking care of demons. We are weary. Please ask the Lord to take them, exclamation point. And Lori was sending that request to Chad? Correct. And moving to the next slide, I'm going to pause to allow the jurors to read. Anija Har, can you indicate the date these messages were sent into the record? These messages were exchanged on August 10th of 2019. And is it fair to say that some of the next slides are going to correspond with the same date? Yes, it's this slide and the next five slides are all a um, continuous exchange of messages between Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell. What about this first slide with these messages caught your attention in relation to the investigation? What first caught my attention is we see now, I believe, the fourth time that Lori Vallow is asking uh, Chad Daybell to check on uh, JJ. And Chad Daybell responds once again that JJ is still JJ. And at this point, Charles has been dead for almost a month? Correct. Through the investigation and your review of the information in this case, did Lori have help with JJ prior to Charles passing? Absolutely. And who was helping her with him? Charles Vallow uh, spent a considerable amount of time and effort in, in caring uh, for Judge, I'm going to object at this point. Move to strike. There hasn't been sufficient foundation. Sustained. Through the review of iCloud, did you review videos? Yes. Did you review other content? Yes. In that content, were there references to Charles taking care of JJ? Many. And at the time these percentages are being pursued, Charles is no longer able to assist with JJ? Correct. Moving to the next slide, I'm going to pause to allow the jurors to read. And Agent Hart, you'd indicated this is a continuation of the previous slide? Yes. And what about these particular messages caught your attention? Well, primarily line 1170 in the last line of the previous slide, Lori Vallow asks Chad Daybell if JJ is at zero yet. 
And we see Chad Daybell's response to that question, yes, he's at zero. He was probably partly through the veil, talking to people both light and dark. And on the previous slide in this one, we again see a reference to Blake. Again, who was Blake? Blake is uh, Melanie Boudreaux's child. Moving to the next slide, I'm going to pause to allow the jurors to read. And Agent Hart, is this again a continuation of the previous two slides? It is. Who are these messages being exchanged between? Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell. What about these particular messages stood out to you in relation to the investigation? This particular conversation is some of the most critical evidence that I located within the iCloud. It represents the clearest and most specific reference. Judge, I'm going to object again. This is speculation. Overruled. It represents the clearest and most specific reference to a plan regarding Tylee and JJ. That plan is spearheaded by Chad Daybell. Judge, I'm going to object at this point. That's a narrative. And it's argumentative. It's sustained. And I'm going to move to strike. Uh, that last part of the comment is stricken. When you indicate that there's the reference to the plan, who is asking if there's a plan? Lori Vallow is asking Chad Daybell if there is a, quote, perfectly orchestrated plan to take the children. What is Chad's response? Chad's response is that there is a plan being orchestrated for the children. Where were Tylee and JJ's remains ultimately located? On Chad Daybell's property. And moving to the next slide, I'm going to pause to allow the jurors to read. And Agent Hart, is this also a continuation from some of the previous slides? Yes, it is. Who are these messages being sent between? Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell. What about these particular messages stood out to you in relation to your, the investigation? Well, first off is line 1159. In the previous slide, there was a question about a plan and a verification of a plan. Then Lori Vallow asks Chad Daybell, what should I be doing? 
And in the subsequent line, 1158, Chad Daybell provides an answer to her, which concludes with being unencumbered and fully free. There's also a reference in that to telestial issues. Do you know through the investigation what telestial would be referencing? I do. What is that? Uh, issues pertaining to this earthly life. And in some of the previous messages, Lori was inquiring about the death percentages of Tylee Ryan and JJ Vallow. That's correct. What else stood out in relation to these messages? Line 1155 is very critical. Chad Daybell texts Lori Vallow uh, and indicates that JJ is, quote, getting close. When I was sitting across from him eating bacon, I sensed he was barely attached to his body. Do you know when the last time J.J. Vallow was seen? I do. When was that? September 22nd, 2019. And moving to the next slide, I'm going to pause to allow the jurors to read. And Agent Hart, again, is this a continuation of some of those previous slides? Yes, it is, and I believe there's one more uh, that is part of this conversation. I'm going to move to that slide and pause to allow the jurors to read that one as well. And going back to that previous slide, what about this one caught your attention? Well, it, it's this is just the continuation of the conversation. I think the more important content is on the following slide. And what about these particular messages stood out to you? Primarily lines 1117 and 1113. In 1117, Lori Vallow, as we've seen previously, uh, says to Chad Daybell, I can't wait, literally can't wait. I have no patience. I want you now with two fire emojis. And then we see Chad Daybell's response to that, which point. Based on your investigation, your review of the content of the iCloud, what did you determine the finish line to be? 
the finish line was for Chad Daybell and Lori Vallow to live this fantasy life together that they had constructed and referenced in this plan that they're talking about. Did that include being unencumbered? Judge, I'm an object. Calls for speculation. Overruled. Unencumbered from her husband and her children and from his wife. Yes. Your Honor, looking at the time, I don't know if you'd like to do the mid-morning break. I think this would be a good time for that. Thank you, Ms. Blake. We will take our mid-morning recess. We'll come back on uh, just 10.30 or perhaps shortly before 10.30. Thank you. All rise, please. <clears throat> All rise. Mr. Court, get in second. Thank you. Please be seated. All right, Mr. Bailiff, we'd like the jurors brought in, please. Thank you. All right, please. Here's our president counter for you, Thank you. Please be seated. All right. Uh, we're back on the record on CR 22211623, State of Idaho versus Chad Guy Daybell. Continuing with direct examination, Agent Hart, if you'd like to continue, Ms. Blake, you may. Thank you, Your Honor. And may I go back to publishing? Yes, you may. And Agent Hart, we'd left off with this slide. you recall that? Yes. And we'd left off talking about the finish line? Correct. Was this the last slide that was part of this particular series of texts? Yes, it was. And moving to the next slide, I'm going to pause to allow the jurors to read. Mr. 
And Agent Hart, can you indicate the date that these messages were being exchanged? Yes, this text exchange is from September 3rd of 2019. Who are the messages being exchanged between? Between Alex Cox and his sister, Lori Vallow. Do you know where Lori Vallow was living at this time? Yes, both Alex Cox and Lori Vallow moved to Rexburg, Idaho from Arizona on September 1st of 2019. Was there anything else about these messages that stood out to you? Uh, line 26, uh, excuse me, 264 from Alex Cox to Lori Vallow where he indicates the, the network password is too many kids and her response is funny exclamation point exclamation point when was the last known sighting of tylee ryan last known sighting of tylee ryan was september 8th of 2019. and when was the last known sighting of jj Vallo? september 22nd of 2019. And moving to the next slide, I'm going to pause to allow the jurors to read. And Agent Hart, is this a continuation from the previous slide? Yes, it is. Who are these messages between? Again, between Alex Cox and Lori Vallow. What about these particular messages caught your attention in relation to the investigation? In relation to the investigation, these few messages provide a little bit of insight as to uh, Alex Cox's role within this um, small circle of people, uh, Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell. And in that line, do you know what the Z's was referring to based on your investigation? I do. What would Z's be in reference to? Z's is a, an abbreviation for zombies. And then when we look to that line 261 in particular, was there something about that that stood out to you? Yes, Lori Vallow indicates uh, that they're trying to get to the bottom of what we need to do to eliminate them completely. And then she indicates to Alex Cox that he would be told also and so to me that sheds light on on judge i'm going to object it's becoming a narrative and it's calling for speculation overruled it sheds light on alex's knowledge how much knowledge he has and that he too would be told what to do or what his role would be in your review of these messages was alex included in the text regarding death percentages he was not. And this message indicates Alex would be told. Correct. And what was Alex's response? Excellent. And again, those messages were exchanged on September 3rd of 2019? Yes. What are we seeing in this slide? This slide uh, contains a very short, it's just a few seconds, um, 
video that I located within the iCloud. As part of our investigation, we went to great pains to try to determine uh, when Tylee was killed and when was the last known sighting uh, that we could verify. And that last known sighting is on September 8th, 2019. Uh, this is a video uh, of a trip that was taken with Lori Vallow, Alex Cox, JJ and Tylee to Yellowstone National Park. It's the last known uh, living proof for Tylee. And this is five days after the messages about eliminating zombies completely? Yes. And five days after the messages about Alex being told what to do? Yes. And who else was in that video? Tylee is hugging her younger brother, JJ, and Alex Cox is standing off to the side. Can you tell us what we're seeing in this slide? Yes, in a similar vein. Um, we searched for what would be the last known sighting or living proof of JJ. And uh, this is uh, what I located on the iCloud. Uh, it's uh, from September 22nd of 2019 at 1046 AM in the morning. Subsequent to this video, there are no other photos or videos existing in the iCloud of JJ. And again, where were JJ and Tylee's remains found? Chad Daybell's property. Moving to the next slide, I'm going to pause to allow the jurors to read. And Agent Hart, can you indicate the date these messages were exchanged? These are from September 24th of 2019. Who are these messages between? These are messages between Sydney Woodbury and Lori Vallow. And in relation to this date, was it significant? Yes. And why was that? The date is two days after our last a known living proof for JJ. What else about these messages stood out to you in relation to your investigation? These are the first lies we can find documented by Lori Vallow uh, regarding JJ and his whereabouts. <laughs> And moving to the next slide, I'm going to pause to allow the jurors to read.
And Agent Hart, there's three messages here that all contain a different date. Is that correct? It is. At the time these messages were exchanged, was Charles Vallow alive? No. Was Tylee Ryan believed to be alive? No. J.J. Vallow believed to be alive? Nope. Was Tammy Daybell alive? Yes. Looking at the first message, can you indicate the date that was sent? First message was sent on October 3rd of 2019. Who was it being sent from and who was it going to? This was a message from Chad Daybell to Lori Vallow. Was there something about that message that stood out to you? Yes, Chad Daybell indicated that he was so excited to go on a date with Lori Vallow. And the next one, can you indicate the date? It's the following day, October 4th, 2019. And who is that message from? That's a message from Lori Vallow to her brother, Alex Cox. And what about that, if anything, caught your attention? Well, at this point, uh, they had both Alex Cox and Lori Vallow had moved to Rexburg, Idaho, were living in Rexburg, Idaho. And the, indicate, the investigation indicates that uh, Tammy or Tylee and JJ were both deceased at this point. Lori Vallow says to Alex Cox, we are supposed to go on a, quote, real date tonight, but are discussing it. And then she indicates perhaps an evening at home would be better, so we are not out and about. And again, at this time, Tammy Daybell is still alive? She is. Where was Lori Vallow living at this time? She was living in Rexburg, Idaho, which is a very short distance from Sugar City, where the Daybell residence was located. And then looking at that last message, can you indicate the date? October 5th, 2019. Who was that message being sent from and who was it going to? So this is a message from Chad Daybell uh, to Lori Vallow. And then there will be two more slides that are a continuation of Chad Daybell reaching out to Lori Vallow approximately 12 hours after the prior text uh, indicating that an evening home may be better rather than a, a real date. And in that last message, can you read, actually, can you read that last message into the record? Hello, sweet angel. Big news about Tammy. Please let me know if you are awake and can talk. I love you, exclamation point and then heart and lip emojis. There's an indication in there from Chad to Lori that there's big news about Tammy. Is that correct? That's correct. And moving to the next slide, I'm going to pause to allow the jurors to read. And Agent Hart, can you indicate the date these messages were exchanged? Yes, the date is October 5th, 2019. And the times are, are within minutes of one another, as well as within minutes of the prior uh, text where Chad Daybell indicated he had big news about Tammy. And looking at these messages, were there things that caught your attention? 
Yes, there's two text messages on this slide and then two more text messages. All four of these text messages are from Chad Daybell to Lori Vallow. I found no response from Lori Vallow to these messages. Uh, but in these messages, uh, Chad Daybell is providing an explanation, a narrative indicating that Tammy has been switched and that there is a demonic entity that is now in Tammy Daybell's body that she wants removed. And that word removed, I think, uh, is critical. And do you see in here a reference to the, the name of the demonic entity? Yes, uh, the, the name that Chad Daybell assigns to this demonic entity is Viola. Judge, I'm going to object, move to strike. There's no testimony regarding who assigned what. Overruled. When we talked about the word removal, based on your review of the iCloud account, your review of other things involved in this investigation, what was significant about removal? Removal indicates the physical death of the person who has the demonic entity. And moving to the next slide, I'm going to pause to allow the jurors to read. And Agent Hart, I believe you indicated this is a continuation from the previous slide. It is. These are all, I believe the very first text message was 4.36 a.m. And so the final text, the final and fifth text message in this stream, all from Chad Daybell to Lori Vallow, is at 4.54 a.m. And again, what day? On October 5th of 2019. What about these particular messages caught your attention in relation to the investigation? In relation to the investigation, line uh, 769 is a crucial piece of evidence from the iCloud that is a very specific reference to the alleged crimes involving Tammy Daybell. Judge object, mischaracterization, speculation, argumentative, I'm going to sustain that as argumentative. We had just talked about the meaning of the word removal in the investigation. Do you see reference to removal in this line? I do. Chad Daybell writes, not fully sure of the timing for removal, but once her actions verify the differences, I don't want to wait. What happened on October 9th of 2019? October 9th. Answer, Judge. What was that? Objection. I asked and answered. Overruled. On October 9th, 2019, was the first attempt on Tammy Daybell's life. Moving to the next slide, I'm going to pause to allow the jurors to read.
And Agent Hart, can you indicate the date these messages were being exchanged? These are messages exchanged on October 19th, 2019. What was significant about October 19th of 2019 in your investigation? That is the date of Tammy Daybell's death. Who were these text messages being exchanged between? This is between Lori Vallow and an individual who uh, wasn't identified by name uh, within the iCloud. So I, I can't tell you who this is that's telling her this information. What was significant about these messages? Or let me withdraw that. What caught your attention in relation to these messages? Simply that someone knew that Tammy Daybell had died and then provided that information to Lori Vallow, who was in Hawaii at the time. Do you know where Chad Daybell was at the time? In his residence in Sugar City, Idaho. Do you know where Alex Cox was? Alex Cox was in Rexburg, Idaho. Do 